The Gulf of Tonkin incident was the last straw that led to the open engagement of the United States in the Vietnam War. In early August 1964, two encounters between American and North Vietnamese warships in the waters of the Gulf of Tonkin allowed President Lyndon B. Johnson the authority to get involved in the war. The U.S. blamed the Communists for both confrontations, but subsequent investigations years later would put the veracity of the second incident into question. Animosity in Vietnam A mandated temporary ceasefire was put into motion at the International Geneva Convention of 1954 to facilitate the separation of the Vietnamese and French forces in Indochina. In addition, the political future of the country would be settled by a formal election in the following two years, but no new government could be created without them. Needless to say, the Accords forbade any political interference of other countries and foreign military presence. The U.S. attended the convention to sort out the hostilities between the natives and the colonizers, but did not participate in signing the agreement. The country had already been sending military advisors to Vietnam as early as the mid-1950s. After the agreement, Vietnam was divided into North Vietnam and South Vietnam as a temporary measure, and Ho Chi Minh was appointed Prime Minister of the North, leading the communist forces in the area. The Soviet Union's expansion was a significant matter of concern for the U.S., and they believed that a policy of containment needed to be applied to prevent the fall of any country in the region to communism. Meanwhile, the Viet Minh National Independence Coalition campaigned for unifying elections from 1955 to 1959, but they were suppressed. As a result, the South Vietnamese government, led by Nguyen Dinh Dem, faced significant discontent, and the communist uprising led by the Viet Cong intensified in 1961. While President John F. Kennedy had initially agreed to send military advisors to support Diem, he eventually approved a limited recall of U.S. forces in the area. It's believed that Kennedy perceived the government in Saigon as unable and unwilling to make much-needed reforms. But days before his assassination in November 1963, a group of Army of the Republic of Vietnam officers deposed the South Vietnamese government, and Diem was executed. The American government did not do anything to stop the coup. The next U.S. President, Lyndon B. Johnson, openly supported military escalation in Vietnam as a result of the Soviet Union's expansionist policies. He was supported by the Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara, who wanted immediate action. Still, Johnson decided to hold back a few more months because of international friction and confusion. Misunderstandings A CIA top-secret operation of covert actions against North Vietnam had been active since 1961. The missions involved sabotage and intelligence gathering. In 1963, several Norwegian ships were purchased and sent to South Vietnam, along with three skippers recruited by Norwegian intelligence officer Alf Martens Myers. The ships were crewed by South Vietnamese personnel and received orders from Admiral Ulysses S. Grant Sharp Jr., head of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. A complaint was filed by the city of Hanoi to the International Control Commission regarding the Geneva Accords, but the U.S. denied being involved. It wouldn't be until four years later that McNamara admitted their involvement. Back in 1964, American naval vessels under the oversight of the U.S. Department of Defense were sent to support South Vietnam under the DeSoto program of electronic warfare support measures. The ships were to observe and intercept communications from the north, while the Vietnamese Navy was to execute an attack on radar stations, bridges, and other targets along northern coasts. On the night of July 30th, the destroyer USS Maddox was in the area when the southern ships attacked the facilities on Han Mei and Han Yu in the Gulf of Tonkin. The ship would then perform patrols along the coast to gather intelligence, and by August 1st, the crew noticed that they were being tracked by North Vietnamese patrol boats and opted to retreat. Still, the following day, Maddox continued her patrols and suddenly faced three North Vietnamese torpedo boats approaching her. The crew fired three warning shots, and the boats then retaliated with torpedoes and machine gun fire. Maddox asked for reinforcements from a nearby carrier, USS Ticonderoga, and air support quickly arrived. During the ensuing battle, one U.S. aircraft and three North Vietnamese ships were severely damaged, but Maddox remained intact. The Americans believed that their intelligence gathering mission was being targeted, and a second destroyer, USS Turner Joy, was sent to reinforce Maddox. It was clear that the North Vietnamese thought that the Maddox was part of an American covert action against their country. Two days later, the Americans allegedly intercepted messages that led them to believe the destroyers were being targeted, but the communications probably referred to a rescue operation for the damaged ships. That night, the two destroyers reported spotting several unidentified vessels approaching them from different directions and immediately asked for air support. 
Commander James Stockdale soon came to their aid, but found no torpedo boats in the area. Captain John Herrick from USS Maddox later sent a message regarding the event, quote, Review of action makes many reported contracts and torpedoes fired appear doubtful. Freak weather effects on radar and overeager sonar men may have accounted for many reports. Suggest complete evaluation before any further action taken. A desire for war. President Johnson voiced the country's concerns the night of the second incident, quote, In the larger sense, this new act of aggression, aimed directly at our own forces, again brings home to all of us in the United States the importance of the struggle for peace and security in Southeast Asia. Aggression by terror against the peaceful villagers of South Vietnam has now been joined by open aggression on the high seas against the United States of America. The determination of all Americans to carry out our full commitment to the people and to the government of South Vietnam will be redoubled by this outrage. Yet our response for the present will be limited and fitting. We Americans know, although others appear to forget, the risks of spreading conflict. We will seek no wider war. During his heartfelt speech, the president did not mention the American secret missions that had been carried out for years in Southeast Asia, withholding pivotal information that could have changed the course of history. In contrast, the Gulf of Tonkin resolution was immediately put into motion. The U.S. Congress supported it unanimously, and almost the entire House of Representatives voted in its favor. The resolution granted President Johnson the authority to support any Southeast Asian country that was considered endangered by communist aggression, bestowing him with limitless power to wage war without official declarations. The U.S. Congress had yielded its constitutional authority to the president, an action that would thereafter be regarded as a blank check. The ambassador of the United States in the United Nations, Adlai E. Stevenson, expressed, quote, In Southeast Asia, we want nothing more and nothing less than the assured and guaranteed independence of the peoples in that area. We are in Southeast Asia to help our friends preserve their own opportunity to be free of imported terror, of alien assassination managed by the North Vietnam communists based in Hanoi and backed by the Chinese communists from Peking. There's a very easy way to restore order in Southeast Asia. Stop the export of revolution that has taken place in that area. When the peace agreements reached long ago are made effective, peace will return to Southeast Asia and military power can be withdrawn. Loose ends. The Vietnam War would go on for another 11 years of brutal combat and thousands of casualties. Still, the War Powers Resolution approved in 1973 stripped the President's power to commit to an armed conflict without the support of the U.S. Congress. The agreement was previously vetoed by President Nixon, but was finally overridden by two-thirds of the Senate and House of Representatives alike. The resolution indicated that the President had to notify Congress of any military action 48 hours in advance. Furthermore, they now had the authority to withdraw troops after 60 days of any engagement and bring them home within 30 days. The incident on August 4, 1964, became the boiling point that President Johnson used to justify the U.S. involvement in the war. Still, a 2005 declassified National Security Agency historical study concluded that U.S. Ismatics had engaged the North Vietnamese on August 2nd, but no actual incident happened on the 4th. Moreover, there's still debate around whether Maddox was in international waters, as the Americans claimed, or if she had trespassed into Vietnamese territory, violating the sovereignty of the crippled nation. Decades later, McNamara met General Vo Win Yap of the Vietnam People's Army and asked him what had happened that night, to which he replied, quote, Absolutely nothing. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more historical anecdotes.